Donald Trump News Today. Trump hits Obama again, this time falsely with claims about gift mode detainees. President Trump used Twitter on Tuesday to again bash predecessor Barack Obama, this time in a false claim about Guantanamo Bay prisoner releases, and to promote the release of the new House Health Care Bill. Trump said that 122 vicious prisoners released by the Obama administration from Gitmo have returned to the battlefield. Just another terrible decision. However, more more than 90 percent of those detainees were released during the George W. Bush administration, not that of Obama. The tweet appears to be a response to reports of a military strike in Yemen that killed a fighter who had been imprisoned at Gitmo. A report from the Office of the Director of National Intelligence said that of the 122 Gitmo detainees who returned to the battlefield, only nine of them were released after Obama took office in January 2009. Obama sought, unsuccessfully, to close Gitmo, saying its very existence helped jihadists recruit new fighters to their ranks. Last week, Trump accused Obama of tapping his telephones in the run-up to the November election. There is no evidence that happened. The wiretap claim came in connection with an ongoing investigation over Russia, another subject on which Trump attacked his predecessor Tuesday, with a reference to Fox News. For eight years Russia ran over President Obama, got stronger and stronger, picked off Crimea and added missiles. Weak at Fox and Friends, Trump said. The FBI and various congressional committees are investigating Russian efforts to influence last year's election by hacking Democratic Party officials. And whether Trump campaign associates had contacts with Russian officials during the election year, 122 vicious prisoners released by the Obama administration from Gitmo have returned to the battlefield. Just another terrible decision. Donald J. Trump at Real Donald Trump March 7, 2017 For eight years Russia ran over. President Obama got stronger and stronger. Picked off Crimea and added missiles. Weak at Fox and Friends, Donald J. Trump at Real Donald Trump March 7, 2017 In another Tuesday tweet, Trump promoted the proposed House health care bill. Our wonderful new health care bill is now out for review and negotiation. Obamacare is a complete and total disaster, is imploding fast, he tweeted. It is the prophets of God that have been sent to America that truly should shock the listener. Dimitri Dudeman is one of such prophets. He lived from 1932 to 1997. He was a Romanian evangelist who stood against the communists of that nation by smuggling in Bibles. He eventually was expelled from Romania to the USA. God sent him to America with warnings of the coming judgment upon that nation. Lord, what did I do that you punished me? Why did you bring me to this country? I have no money, Lord. I have no food. I don't have a bed to lay my head down on. Lord, why? Why did you bring me to this country? I don't even have a place to lay my head down on. He said, Dimitri, I brought you to this country because this country will burn. So why did you bring me here to burn and then let me die in jail in my own country? He'd just say, this is California, this is Las Vegas, what I have shown you is that Sodom and Gomorrah, its sin has reached God, and God has decided to punish it through fire, and one day it will burn. He came and showed me New York, this is New York, it is also a Sodom and Gomorrah, and one day it will burn. He came and he showed me Florida. This is Florida, he said. This is a Sodom and Gomorrah. In one day it will burn. I said, what will you do with me though? He said, I told you to be quiet. And he brought me back to the place we left. He said, now we talk. I brought you to this country. Because I love this country. I love the people in this country. And through your mouth, I want to wake up a lot of people. Again, he said, America will burn. 
I said, but how can America burn when it's so powerful? He said, remember and tell them. He said, you reach TV stations and radio stations and churches. But tell them everything I tell you. Hide nothing. America will burn. But again, how will it burn? He said, tell them this. The Russian spies found out where the most powerful nuclear plants in America are. When Americans will think it's peace and quiet and everything's perfect, some groups from the inside will revolt against the government. The government will be occupied with the revolution and then from the ocean, in Cuba, out of Cuba, Nicaragua, Nicaragua America Central, Central America, Mexico, Mexico and two other countries that I can't remember, they will bombard the nuclear plants in America, and America will burn. There are many prophets that have prophesied destruction upon the USA. Everything from tidal waves, earthquakes, nuclear explosions, military dictatorship and slavery. Certainly, there have been false prophets and they have been proven so. Some have been correct sometimes and wrong at other times. The following are a smattering of other prophets that have sounded the same alarm. Henry Groover started his walking prayer ministry in 1961 at the age of 18. The following recounts his vision. And the submarines were sitting there aimed at America. I saw them sprinkled all the way across the East Coast. When I saw that, my family at that time lived in Portland, Oregon. I was alarmed, of course, and I wanted to look over toward Portland to see what was going on. And as I looked across the continent of the United States of this globe, I saw the submarines from way up by Washington, the top of Washington, all the way down around towards San Diego, poised in the same way all the way along our coast in the north from the Pacific sides. Then something else caught my attention. I began to see radio towers going up all across the nation. And these radio towers, as they went up, the, da, 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 the dotted lines begin going out as though they were transmitting. And then there was an alarm went off in me. They're sounding the alarm. We're going to be under attack. The siege is laid. When all of a sudden I was watching these radio dots going out like the transmitting of a warning. And instead of the people being warned, they sprinkled to the ground like dust. And an alarm went off in me and I cried out in the heavens and I said, Oh God, they won't even know what hit them. And at that time, all of a sudden, I looked down on the eastern seaboard at the submarine was drawn to that one right off from New York City. And I saw the missile come right out of that submarine and go right up and come right over the city of New York. And the entire city disappears. Then I looked down, on down toward Florida. And down there, I could see another explosion take place. I looked across, because of my family being in the Pacific Northwest, I looked across, another explosion took place up by Seattle, Bellevue. And then another one down by San Francisco. And another one down toward Los Angeles, and another one toward San Diego. Rick Wiles is the True News radio presenter, and he's also a pastor. In 1998, he was working for TBN, and he had this vision in TBN's chapel. On the same day, he left TBN. Now, whether you believe me or not, it doesn't matter. I, I, this was, I'm telling you the truth. And I, know, I understand when people talk about visions that that's a subjective thing and you have to make your, your own mind if that really happened. But I'm going to tell you what happened to me. It was like a movie screen appeared in front of me. And I watched buildings on, on fire. Big skyscrapers on fire. I saw the smoke billowing out of the buildings. I saw Americans staggering out of the cities. Their faces were, were ashen. They were, they were in shock. They looked like they couldn't believe that they were alive, that they had survived what had just happened. And I said, Father, what is this? What am I seeing? And I heard in my spirit, he said, Son, this is America's future if your nation does not repent. The following vision is recounted by A.A. A. Allen from 1954. He was primarily an evangelist. 
Then suddenly I saw from the Atlantic and from the Pacific and out of the Gulf rocket-like objects that seemed to come up like fish leaping out of the water. High into the air they leaped, each headed in a different direction, but every one towards the US. On the ground the sirens screamed louder, and up from the ground I saw similar rockets begin to ascend. To me these appeared to be interceptor rockets, however none arose however they arose from different points all over the US. However, none of them seemed to be successful in intercepting the rockets that had risen from the ocean. These rockets finally reached their maximum height, slowly turned over and fell back towards the earth in defeat. Then suddenly the rockets which had leaped out of the ocean like fish all exploded at once. The only thing I have ever seen which resembled the thing I saw in my vision was the picture of the explosion of the H-bomb in the Pacific. David Wilkerson lived from 1931 to 2011. Internationally respected pastor, he authored the book The Cross and the Switchblade. He released the following prophecy in 1985. America is going to be destroyed by fire. Sudden destruction is coming and few will escape. Unexpectedly and in one hour a hydrogen holocaust will engulf America and this nation will be no more. The Great Holocaust follows an economic collapse in America. The enemy will make its move when we are weak and helpless. America will not repent. We have a few clues that point to the timing of the attack on America. According to the above prophets, it will be preceded by civil rioting in the US and also by an economic collapse. Both of these eventualities have become more and more probable with each passing year. There are, however, other prophecies that may give us a few more clues to the timing of this attack. The evangelist Alan C. Martin had a prophecy that purportedly shows Obama to be the last American president. In a combination of two separate visions, 1971 and 1995, he describes the following. He saw 12 houses which he believed represented the last 12 American presidents. In the backyard of house number three, he saw a Life magazine with JFK's face on it saying, in memory of dead presidents. In the front yard of the 11th president was a willow tree which represents sadness. Over the 12th house he saw six stars with one falling to the ground. A voice came to him and said, look to the east. He began to turn to the east, fully expecting to see the Lord coming in the clouds. The dark clouds opened up in two places and he saw the sun darkened and the moon turning to blood. He believed these signs represented the judgment to come during the 12th president. According to the vision, we are now in the house of that last American tw president, the 12th house. This prophecy will certainly be tested over the next four years. Michael Baldia is the grandson of Dimitri Dudeman. He also had a vision that allows us to speculate on the timing of the final American judgment. Here it is. I dreamt I was walking through a sparsely wooded forest, and suddenly my attention was drawn to an eagle flying high above the tree line. It was a beautiful sight to behold as the eagle rode the thermals flying in slow lazy arcs across the blue sky. Noticing that it was slowly descending towards the earth, I followed it for a long time, at its descent not being sudden, but very gradual. Finally I came upon a small clearing where there were no trees, just some bushes. The eagle landed in the clearing and began to look around, not seeming to notice me. As I began to wonder what relevance this had, a man dressed in white, hands clasped in front of him, appeared beside me and said, Be patient. In due time, you will see the purpose. I was silent as I watched the eagle and was beginning to grow somewhat impatient when suddenly it seemed out of nowhere a brown snake lunged at the eagle and bit down on its left wing. The snake's strike was very quick and very precise. The eagle reacted without delay, clawing and pecking at the snake, cutting deep wounds in its underbelly, trying to defend itself and ward off the serpent. Just as it seemed, the eagle was winning the battle and the serpent was retreating. Another serpent approached, red and black diagonal stripes covering its body, and without hesitation struck out at the eagle's right wing, biting down and refusing to release. After a momentary tug of war, the serpent tore off flesh and feathers, leaving a large wound on the eagle's right wing. The second bite was much worse than the first, and for an instant, the eagle was stunned. 
Then a serpent much larger than the previous two, made up of many colors, slithered towards the eagle, opened its jaws, and lunged, taking the whole of the eagle's head in its mouth before biting down. The serpent's retreat, and the man who had been standing beside me walked to the eagle, knelt down, picked it up, and held it in his cupped hands. This has been revealed to you that you may know. The first bite has been, the second is yet to come, and the third will be its destruction. And that was the end of the dream. The thing that I have to point out is that this nation's descent wasn't a sudden one. Once we were a godly nation, once we were not ashamed to say the name Jesus, once we allowed our children to pray in schools, once we were not embarrassed of saying that the Ten Commandments were the foundation of our logistics and of our legal system, once we said that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is our God as well, our descent wasn't sudden by any means. Because there's nothing sudden about how the enemy works. Michael Baldea's vision was given in October 2004. It was clear that the first strike was 9-11. Whether the second strike may have been related to the economic crash of 2007 and 8 is still yet to be decided. There is more to be said in regard to the first strike or to the first judgment that became known as 9-11. A few people warned in advance of this event. Rick Wiles, the True News presenter, was one of them. When I started the radio program in, in the summer of 1999, I said several times in July and August of 1999, I, I said the words to the effect, folks, I don't know what this means, but when I pray... I'm hearing in my spirit, judgment starts in America on September 11. Now, I didn't know what it meant, but I thought it was imminent. That's all I heard. But two years later, on September 11, 2001, our phones rang all day long from people in Dallas-Fort Worth who heard me speak those words in 99, and they were saying, it's happened. 9-11 was a watershed event, both at a national and also at a spiritual level. Something had been broken in the heavenlies. In his book, The Harbinger, Messianic teacher Jonathan Kahn describes the signs that accompanied that infamous day. He recounts the words of Senator Majority Leader Tom Daschler on the day after 9-11. I know that there is only the smallest measure of inspiration that can be taken from this devastation. But there is a passage in the Bible from Isaiah that I think speaks to all of us at times like this. The bricks have fallen down, but we will rebuild with dressed stone. The fig trees have been felled, but we will replace them with cedars. That is what we will do. We will rebuild. Not understanding that this verse in Isaiah is in fact recounting the stubborn and arrogant response of the northern tribe of Israel to the judgment of God. Instead of repenting of their idolatry, they decided to rebuild even stronger. It was 18 years after this, in 722 BC, when the northern tribe of Israel was finally decimated by the Assyrian Empire. This sign is combined with the laying of the foundation stone for the One World Tower, a hewn stone, and also the sign of the sycamore tree. In the yard of St Paul's Church near the site of 9-11 was a sycamore tree which was cut down by a beam of the falling North Tower, a freak accident. Two years following 9-11, a biblical cedar tree, that is an arez or a conifer tree, was placed in the exact position of the cut down sycamore tree, fulfilling to the letter the words spoken by Tom Dashler. So there you have it. The warnings have been given. The signs have been crystal clear. America, or new Israel, has forgotten and turned away from its foundation, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. 
Many are expecting President Obama to not only win the election, but this, his last term, will be characterised by upheaval and potential devastation. God is slow when enacting judgment on a nation. He has given the warnings and the signs. For its idolatry, its sexual sins, its arrogance, its unwanted military forays into other nations, America has been marked for destruction. Will it survive in any form?